Now, the standard model was based on the assumptions of homogeneity and isotropy. In the 1960s and 70s, some cosmologists suggested that by denying homogeneity and isotropy in the universe, one might be able to craft an oscillating model of the universe and thus avert the absolute beginning predicted by the standard model. If the internal gravitational pull of the mass of the universe were able to overcome the force of the expansion, then the expansion could be reversed into a cosmic contraction, a sort of cosmic big crunch. Now, if the universe were not homogeneous and isotropic, then the uh, collapsing universe might not coalesce at a point, but the material contents of the universe might pass one another by. So the universe would appear to bounce back uh, from the contraction into a new expansion phase. If this process could be repeated indefinitely, then the beginning of the universe uh, might be uh, avoided. And thus, on the oscillating model of the universe, uh, we see that the universe is sort of like a concertina, expanding and contracting from eternity. Now, such a theory is extraordinarily speculative, but again, there were metaphysical motivations for adopting this model. The prospects of the oscillating universe were severely dimmed in 1970, however, by Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking's formulation of the singularity theorems which bear their names. The theorems disclose that under very generalized conditions, an initial cosmological singularity is inevitable, even for inhomogeneous and non-isotropic universes. Reflecting on the impact of this discovery, Hawking notes that the Hawking-Penrose singularity theorems, and I quote, led to the abandonment of attempts, mainly by the Russians, to argue that there was a previous contracting phase and a non-singular bounce into expansion. Instead, he says, almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang, end quote. Despite the fact that no space-time trajectory can be extended through a singularity, the oscillating model nevertheless exhibited a stubborn persistence. But three further strikes were lodged against it. Uh, summarizing, first, there are no known physics which would cause a collapsing universe to bounce back to a new expansion. Secondly, um, the observational evidence indicated that the mean mass density of the universe was simply insufficient to generate enough gravitational attraction to halt and reverse the expansion. Indeed, the most recent discoveries suggest that the expansion is actually accelerating rather than decelerating. And thirdly, the thermodynamic properties of an oscillating model turned out to imply the very beginning of the universe that its proponents sought to avoid. Looking back, uh, quantum cosmologist Christopher Isham muses, perhaps the best argument in favor of the thesis that the Big Bang supports theism is the obvious unease with which it is greeted by some atheist physicists. At times, this has led to scientific ideas such as continuous creation, that is the steady state theory, or an oscillating universe being advanced with a tenacity which so exceeds their intrinsic worth that one can only suspect the operation of psychological forces lying very much deeper than the usual academic desire of a theorist to support his or her theory. The oscillating model drew its life from its avoidance of an absolute beginning of the universe. But once other models became available claiming to offer the same benefit, the oscillating model sank into oblivion under the weight of its own deficiencies. 